hey, you know, maybe if we don't, you know, rap about stabbing people, whatever, you know, this this might work. Not for one minute did I get my doubt you always holding it down for my crew, cat but like ooh, and I did everything about you. That was cool as shit. This shit was getting played all the time, everywhere. It's buzzing how much that influenced people my age. I got candlelight, ooh. Dane Rumble here. I'm Jeremy Ken Johnson. I'm Rebecca Lahal. Brad, aka Diablo, aka Jerome Fortune. My rap alias was Kid Deft. From the Fast Crew. Fast Crew? Fast Crew. Okay. I was the producer and part time rapper. 15 or so people that used to come over to my mum's house and we used to just rap to these beats. That number whittled down to three, Brad, Dane and myself. There was always a party vibe up in the studio. You know, we'd love to talk about our own experiences, which was partying and not much else. And we had Rebecca. I met Jeremy first. He and the guys had recorded some stuff. And he was like, just come and record over what we've done. You know, when we wrote that song, I think I was 18 years old. I sort of remember Jeremy playing the, the jing jing guitar, but it was just two chords on a guitar, G major, A major. And I just remember hearing it going ding ding, ding ding. Dane comes in, records the hook. I was just completely in love with it at the time. I was like, this is the coolest thing that we've ever written. About you. I remember things just really started to escalate. I want everybody out there to go and ring the radio station right now and say, you play that song. It felt like an explosion went off. The shows got pretty serious. Overnight, our show capacities doubled. As early on, they were packing out venues. They had their own set of fans. Just one day walking into the supermarket, cruising the feminine hygiene aisle, grabbing something off the shelf, and suddenly I was surrounded by these girls all wanting my autograph, and it was like, this is meant to be a really private moment. <laughs> I think when this song started charting, that was a, a, a real moment for me thinking, am I gonna be a famous person? That was honestly the first thing I thought about. something that you, you always wish for being a musician, you always want to happen. Everyone was kind of like, who are these guys? If you thought Fast Crew was an overnight success, think again. While they may seem to have paired overnight, it's been a long road for the boys and the one girl who have been plugging away for years. They created their own scene. They didn't need the hip hop scene. I think people didn't know what to make of us. Is it hip hop? Is it pop? The early stages, I really wanted to be a part of the New Zealand hip hop community. I really wanted to have these connections with these guys. But once we started doing our thing, it, that became pretty evident that we were not really gonna be accepted as part of that group. The sound was like a quirky, kind of like other kind of hip hop. A lot of people think that the Fast Crew's about I got, but I mean, this album's got a lot more depth to that. So they, you know, they're from suburbia. For the suburban kids. Gave suburban kids some sort of identity, identity yeah, yeah. you know? It was nice to know that hip-hop was stretching that far. All in house ain't got any ideas And I don't stop all for the love of hip-hop It's a fast crew, come on with the you're ready or not Girls, grab a guy who you dance, show me what you got I'm sure you got hated on by like all the hip-hop heads initially. I think people just didn't like the fact they were goofy. I thought it was really necessary to be someone have a bit of fun in that fucking scene. I think we were trying to keep our image clean to sort of differentiate ourselves. I really hated being like the pop music guy because there's a weird stigma with pop. Oh my god, he like kissed me! We wanted to be in the commercial kind of pop market, make money, get get to a bigger crowd. This is the fucking energy we need. Like, they were fun, they were cool. There was a bit of a stigma as well. People kind of thought we were these rich, white North Shore kids. Kind of well-to-do kids from the suburbs. That kind of label stuck for a minute there. Truth was far from that. You know, I left home when I was 16, had no money, you know, learned to hustle very, very early on. When really we were these kids who were having so much fun, that fun quickly turned into something quite stressful. 
Fast Crew's follow-up single, It's the Incredible, has used an eagle sample from Victim of Love without permission. And now the young Aucklanders are being threatened with legal action. No one from the band, their management or their record company were available to appear on camera but told us it was an innocent mistake. Yeah, where the eagles sued us. The eagles sample was uh, the beginning of the end of the fast crew, uh, to put it bluntly. Do you have any specific questions? You to... Jeremy wrote the beat one night. The next day, Dane came, heard the song, was like, that's shit hot. Lo and behold, it became our second single. Jeremy went to see a lawyer, was like, hey, you know, what do we do? And the lawyer said, look, there are only two bands in the world that you can't fuck with. The first being Metallica, and the second, of course, being the Eagles. Their lawyer spoke to Don Henley. Don Henley went back and said, nah, Kill it. The ramifications are huge, with the album already pulled from radio and record stores on both sides of the Tasman, destroying their tilt at the lucrative Christmas market and arguably blowing any future prospects in Australia. They had to destroy them. Um, the Eagles said, if you guys don't destroy them, we'll sue you, we'll come for you. So you have to take the CDs to like this official company who, who um, puts them in an incinerator. They wouldn't even allow you to have one for prosperity. You know, that was just absolutely terrifying. We were like, ah! Yeah, really screwed that one up. Um, yeah, the people at the label were super pissed off at me for, for that, and rightly so. And although at that time, a lot of New Zealand artists were illegally sampling songs, it just so happened that we were the ones who got caught, and we sampled one of the biggest bands in the world, like idiots costs could be too much to cope with. Whatever happens, it's unlikely this will be one story where the main characters ride off happily into the sunset. Pretty much went downhill from that point. What are you doing? Riding a rat. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? I'm oh, pretty shitting. What people don't realise is we were doing it for four years prior to I Got and we were doing it for you know four or five years after I Got, a very, very long time. like a rap career, eh? Close but no cigar. <laughs> An old friend said, hey, what are you doing now? And I was like, oh, we're making another Fast Crew record. And I remember her say, oh, it's like you're trying to flog a dead horse. And at the time I was like, huh? And it was really kind of shocking, but it also really stuck with me. I was like, yeah, I should be doing something else, anything else. At the end, we just kind of all grew up. I don't know, it was just our time to sort of wrap things up. It was getting more business orientated than the actual fun of making music and I didn't want to be slogging it out for the rest of my life, trying to get back to the height of the I Got era. These guys are fucking legit and they built their own fan base from the ground up. So yeah, I forever love those guys, for sure. When I listen back to I Got, look, it is what it is. I mean, the music's hilarious, but you know, it's a, it's a snapshot of of time for us. I literally leave if someone threatens to put the song on and they're like, rap your verse, rap your verse. And it's just like, I'm just like, <gasps> I'll go to some event, someone will play the song because they know that I'm there, which used to embarrass me, but now it's great. I was talking with some friends, our daughters were playing together and I was like, I haven't even shown my daughter the music videos. The moment I played I Got, she immediately started dancing, reminding me we had so much fun together. I listened to it this morning, first time in 10 years. I was like, um, oh, we did, we did actually have fun. It represents such an amazing time in my life. You know, I wouldn't change any of that for the world. The whole I Got era and that album was, was the best times we, we ever had. Shake hands with a baseline, it's rhyme over matter. Still seeing these sales like gathered in a regatta. And I've got plenty of time, but never late. I cleverly time every rebound that I make. And never mistake me for a liar or a fake. And if you wanna hate, will you pick Kaye? Well, let's keep it my way. Come now, follow the lead.